We're gonna drop it in, let it go for a bit, and then yeah. give it a nice bath. Right over here. Sounds good. Yep, just like a Nordic spa. Oh, true. <laughs> true, you have a little spa day. <laughs> Ew. Tell me a little bit more about like how you got into chemistry. I kind of just stumbled into it. I'm gonna be honest. I think my brother was actually in chemistry oh, okay. and like a good younger sibling. I kind of just followed him into chemistry. I was <laughs> like, if he liked it, I'll probably like it. I have stuck with it though for yes. a lot longer. But you are also a chemist. How did you end up? In this? Um, basically, did my first year of undergrad and it was like undecided. I was just like, I don't. I don't know what I want to do. Okay. I went to my advisor and he was like, well, what do you like? What do you don't like? I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know that physics is right for me. <laughs> um, but like, I really like the nitty gritty. I like atoms and molecules. I do like the big stuff too, like the more macro science, but not sure I like anatomy. <laughs> okay. Um, and he was like, well, chemistry might be like a nice like in between. Okay. Yeah, I fell into chemistry. Similarly, but in a different way. Yeah. I was lucky enough to start working in a lab after first year. Shout out Ken Malley, who was my mentor like all through my undergrad. I had made like something and he walked up and he's like, how does it feel to have made something that has never existed in the world before? And that was like the moment for me. That's really cool. Yeah. So I only did my bachelor's. I didn't go much further than that. But I think if I had that moment, like that's yeah. such a cool and unique experience to yeah. have. And, like, really motivates you to keep yeah. keep going. Yeah. It, it worked. I was actually a biology major at the time. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's what flipped me. That's so. funny because yeah. I remember we would sometimes share labs with like the biochemists. Okay. I'm like, the biochemists. Like, <laughs> they don't even know what it's like. <laughs> no. It's yeah. not as hard. <laughs> You've come to the dark side. Yeah. So you did your PhD then in I did. materials chemistry? Materials, uh, specifically uh, like polymers or plastic. They're, they're called self emollative, which it's to sacrifice oneself by fire. So I always say I worked on self-destructing plastics. Oh my god, I love that. It's <laughs> yeah. the best way to brand it. <laughs> yeah. It's not quite the same, but uh, yeah, that's that's how I would explain like what I did my PhD research on. Right. And now I no longer work in the lab. I work as a science communicator. Same here. Okay. Lessons in Chemistry yep. is a book. Became a show. Yes. Emmy nominated. So I feel like we should talk about it. Yeah. So it's about Elizabeth Slott, she's a chemist, starts in 1951, things don't really pan out, and then she ends up being like this famous TV show, like, cook, and she brings and in, like, science of it. Yeah. yeah, the science of cooking. Yeah. The chemistry of cooking. The chemistry of cooking. Yes. One of the things that, like, jumped out to me when I was watching the show was, like, the specific time period. I didn't know much about this time period at the time, but um, just based on the conversations, it seemed like there's a lot going on around, like, DNA yeah. at the time. And, and proteins, yeah. Yeah, when we were going through school, it was like, yeah. DNA is genetic material, a fact. Yeah. <laughs> but in the TV show, it's at that period in time when, like, they didn't know that. Yeah. They were figuring it out. It was right. like, there was like a race. And so I think the reason it's kind of like 1951 is like, in 1952, 53, is yeah. when there was like a bunch of um, big discoveries in like, in the real world. This yes. Is. I think it was uh, the like the Miller Urey experiment. And it's kind of like the experiment in like abiogenesis, which is what Elizabeth Zott is like super interested yes, in. Yes, yeah. Regions, which is like being able to make life out of uh, non-life yeah. materials, whereas there are other people who thought life came from other decaying, life, yeah. like decaying matter. Yeah. yeah. In or the same year, nineteen fifty-two, Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase kind of proved that DNA was what was like allowing traits right. to be passed on from parent to child. Yeah. So that was 52. And then I think actually in like 1944, there were like a couple people who first demonstrated that DNA could be holding yeah. the genetic material, but like no one really, they're all like, no, it's protein. Yeah. And we're like, mm. it kind of took a while before people yeah. were like, oh, maybe it is DNA. Yeah, so like, it was like 1952, Hershey yeah. and Chase. There was enough evidence, like a body of evidence at that point. Right. People were like, okay. Like, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Yeah. Today. And then, I think, 53 is yeah. when we discovered the structure of DNA, DNA. with yeah. Watson and Crick and Rosalind Franklin. Yeah. 
the you know under recognized Ross the under recognized Ryan. but also Martha Chase is a little bit under recognized I'd say yeah potentially I don't know, I don't know enough about her but I was like very excited when I was like reading yeah. into that I was like, like oh. that's a that's a, which yeah. leads me I want I was trying to figure out like yeah. something of like who was Elizabeth Zott and Kelvin Evans supposed yeah. to be in the show and yeah. I feel like they're kind of a conglomeration of all of those those people all we those talked people. about yeah they do a lot of name dropping in this show yeah in the first episode in the first episode <clears throat> and you're like Richard Feynman and like Vauquelin and they're kind of like awkward name drops in a way like they're not as relevant the name drops are interesting in the choices that they made and who mm -hmm. they name drop yeah because all of these people that were very pivotal in like 1952 and 53 that we had mentioned like were they not mentioned because they don't exist in this world yeah or is it just because no one knew who they were yet yeah yeah but then like you know if it's 1951 like if you're yeah. in the field you would know of them right yeah. i would assume like you would think right rosalind franklin's x-ray diffraction helped figure out a structure her colleague wilkins had shown this image to watson and craig who were like not at the same institution. So they knew of each other. They weren't famous the way that they are famous today. Yeah. In that case, if there's no mention, potentially, yeah, like it's an alternate universe. But I think it's almost a missed opportunity here where you don't really see that historical context. I found it so much more interesting after I was like reading these Wikipedia yeah. pages. Like I paused the first episode. Right. Because I was like, <laughs> what are they yeah. talking about? And then I was like, oh, this is so much cooler to yeah. me now. You don't really understand the significance of what their research and, is and what they're and why they're so upset when the research is getting stolen yeah without that that context of like this was yeah. groundbreaking work the show doesn't do enough to prove that it's groundbreaking to the yeah. viewers when they submit their grant application they say you know we are assuming that dna is the basis of life in our research knowing that that's against the hastings position but later donati steals their work yeah i think it just would have been really cool to be able to paint more of that also, context here it also adds i forget if it's episode one or episode two but a different context to when kelvin is teaching harriet's daughters she's yes. doing the he's doing the strawberry dna extraction yeah and he <laughs> he says dna is like the foundation right. of life and in that context and i'm like that was actually a bold statement. Yeah. Because we didn't know that yet no. at that point. Rather than like, I believe that DNA is the foundation of life. It was also <laughs> because it's like, I don't, I don't know, like I kind of like saw as like, of course they're doing the strawberry DNA. Yes, I like roll back a little bit because like that has been done like all the time. I've done it so many times working yeah. with like student um, science workshops and stuff like that. So despite the eye rolling, uh -huh. we are back. We are back. To do the we're strawberry gonna do, DNA extraction. We're going to one more time. So first thing, we've got our strawberries. We're going to put them in this beautiful Ziploc bag. Okay. Do, well, we, do we take the stems off? We do have to take the stems okay. off. Beautiful cutting. See, if you were a child, I definitely wouldn't let you do that part. You wouldn't let me use the knife? No, probably wouldn't. No, maybe if, I this, had, if we had like a plastic knife, but that's, that's fair. We're trying to be as sustainable as possible today. And then, and then I, I, I smoosh? You smoosh. We're gonna squish for two minutes. This will break open our strawberries to get to the good stuff. Okay, <clears throat> so now the next step is we have half a cup of water here. Okay, so water. Can, yeah. And then we have salt, or as Elizabeth Zott would call it, sodium chloride. Sodium. <laughs> so I think we're adding the salt to help uh, any proteins that might be like kind of attached onto the DNA. Uh, it'll it'll help kind of remove those, get those off. We're gonna put two teaspoons of <laughs> detergent in here. And uh, the dish detergent helps with dissolving the cell membrane so we can further and get the DNA. All that All DNA. that good stuff out. I'm, I'm like really excited. <laughs> so now that we've done that, we are we're going to pour it into the Ziploc bag. Okay. And we got to mix it good for like another minute or two? Yes. But make sure we don't get too many soap bubbles. Okay, so gently mix. Maybe gently let's mix. Just, we'll just do this. <laughs> you can like... Squeeze it. Okay, I'll get yeah. more air out then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't burst the bag. <laughs> Smash. Yeah. Whee. <laughs> and we like to do strawberries because A, they're super kid friendly, and B, they've got eight copies of each chromosome, which is basically DNA all coiled and packaged up nicely. Humans only have two, so that means strawberries have a lot of DNA we can look at. Now that it's all nicely smashed. Yes. 
Get your filter in. The filtering. This is good. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay, round two. <laughs> you know, mistakes happen. Mistakes happen. As this is the first episode. episode. It yes. is. This is. This gives me uh, more confidence here. Would you like to pour this time? Because <laughs> I, I got too excited. I did. Okay. It's okay. You can see it all chunky. Yeah. I don't want the non DNA parts in there. So this will help. Yeah, you can see it coming out nice and clear. Nice. All right, we have our cold. Okay. Equal parts? Equal parts of rubbing alcohol as with however much liquid we have yeah. here. So, do you, you like want to? Sure. <laughs> I think we want to pour it down the side because we don't want to like, yeah, we kind of want it to hopefully make two different layers. Right. That's so cool. A few moments later. <gasps> You're starting so, to see like streaks. Oh, you are. Ooh. So I, th I think what's happening in this one is it's like right on the surface between where right. those two layers are. Uh, the DNA doesn't want to like, it's fine hanging out in water, but it doesn't dissolve well in isopropanol. So right. when something doesn't dissolve, it kind of collapses in on itself. It's kind so of then you see it become more of its own thing rather than mm -hmm. just like in the mix. All right. So the white stuff is the DNA that we're looking at. <clears throat> oh my goodness. So should I just like scoop it? Yeah, scoop it. Oh no. Oh, I like it's a little bit there. You know, Harriet's kids are right. It does look like snot a little oh, bit. It does. Is it snot or is it DNA? That's gonna be the new game. Ooh. The other thing that I like rolled my eyes at was when in the very like first minute or so of the show, Elizabeth thought goes like, Did you get the sodium chloride I requested? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, I was like, listen, I've only been in four years of chemistry. We have never even said that as a joke. No, n never. Like, my husband is also a chemist. Right. And at, at no point. Yeah. I think the only time we would have... No, not even then. <laughs> it's like, when we worked in the same lab, right. we have, at most, we maybe would have said NaCl, yeah. which is like sodium chloride. The like the spelling short of the form. Yeah. But... Never in our actual kitchen. No. I refer to it as. Not in the kitchen? Never. <laughs> no. She does the same thing with like, well, no, not the same thing, but she says CH3COH. She writes that out as yeah. the ingredient. Yeah, kachu. Like, oh. Sorry. Kachu. <laughs> Sorry. It's, not, it's not actually kachu. Yes, it's... no. The chemical formula. It does kind of look like kachu. It does kachu. kind of look like kachu. And I love that. I'm stealing that from now on. <laughs> when I'm referring to acetic acid or vinegar. Yeah, I like how she said, oh, it's, it's acetic acid. Yeah. Like, like that clarifies it. Vinegar is like very specifically 5% acetic acid in water. Yes. So like. 5% kachu. 5% kachu. <laughs> it is 5% kachu. Like I, I see that it all serves the purpose of like making her seem brilliant, but it's so superficial. <laughs> It felt very like, I don't know if pandering is the right term, but like mm -hmm. playing up those like stereotypes to right. like just sell like she's a smart person. Yeah. But I, I think most chemists that I know would not mm -hmm. be using that language yeah. in, in their house when they're talking about cooking right. and cleaning. Yeah. If you look at media portrayal of scientists, mm -hmm. a lot of them have that very similar behavior and like way of speaking, which is less helpful when We've got scientists that, you know, act and speak very differently, too. It would yeah. be nice to be able to show sort of like that as well. Referring to, like, vinegar as CH3COH, it makes common things sound, like, a lot more intimidating than it should be. Yeah. Int intimidating is the word yeah. I would use. Chemicals <laughs> have yeah. that rap. Yeah. And, and there's, like, there's a few other instances in the show. The specific one I'm thinking of is when she says something about jet fuel. Do you know what I'm right. talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where she's like, you shouldn't eat anything that shares the same ingredients as jet fuel. Yeah, which like, to be fair, like don't drink jet fuel. <laughs> like it's, it's, yeah. it's not good, but it, it has that same like fear mongering. Yeah. Did you grow up yeah. with a statement that was like, um, don't eat anything you can't pronounce? Yes, exactly. Like in hindsight, it's a little bit like anglocentric. There are a lot of things that are edible <laughs> in different languages that you can't pronounce. Yeah. She says something similar too with the, the can of soup. A sponsor is like a soup company and she's like, you shouldn't have this canned soup because it's full of chemicals and not the good kind. Oh, yeah. And, and that's, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there's like inherently good or inherently bad, bad. chemicals. It's yeah. all in like the dosage, like the dose makes the poison. Yeah. Vinegar is 
five percent acetic acid yeah. in water. That mm -hmm. and we you know make salad dressings with it. We yeah. cook with it all the time. We say. But if you were to take pure acetic acid, yeah, it's it's an acid. It would like burn your skin off. Mm. I did get because I wasn't always you know. <laughs> The oh, most you safe were the most safe love. <laughs> oh, always the most safe love. Elizabeth Zah would be looking down on you. <laughs> There's still, like we said, like that strong fear of chemicals that has a bad rap. I've never really met any chemist who would even say that. Like, it's full yeah. of chemicals, not the good kind. Like, even with that caveat, we all kind of just stay, stay away from that. Yeah. Everything's a chemical. Everything's a chemical. <laughs> Everything's a chemical. <laughs> yeah. Most most knowing chemicals like all have like you know safety protocols around right. them. Even water has its own like. Safety yeah, debt. It's like this ten pages long. Yeah. Of like, how do you handle this? How do you handle water? <laughs> how do you handle it safely? And yeah. like, oh, I find it hilarious. It's like, what to do if you like inhale it? Yeah. And if you swallow it? Right. And if <laughs> you get it on your clothes, if you get yeah. on your clothes, you should take the clothes off and wash them. <laughs> if you didn't know that H two O was, was water, water, yeah. Like some of these things, you could be like, oh, that's like kind of intimidating, right. and scary. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely need to be mindful of like what we consume and even Absolutely. how Absolutely. we consume it. Yeah, yeah, but I think that there is a level of healthy um, wariness and then there's going too far. Like you said, you know, like... The, the dose makes the poison. The dose makes the poison, yeah. Too much of even of a good thing can be a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. everything in moderation. Everything in moderation. Including moderation. Including <laughs> <laughs> moderation. Is there a backstory behind this? <laughs> no, absolutely not. No backstory. <laughs> of course, the ingredients list is there for um, important reasons, but like we need a different rule of thumb. I mean, if you take like tomatoes, for example. So tomatoes are made up of chemical compounds, leucine, threonine, valine, histidine, lysine, arginine, linoleic acid, linolenic acid, lysopene, beta carotenoids, beta cytosterol, campesterol, stigmasterol, quercetine, camphorol, naringenine, caffeic acid, lutein. So like, I need struggle with saying Ooh. those words. But like tomatoes are pretty healthy, I'm I'm sure, right? <laughs> Dose makes the poison. Dose makes no. the poison. Like just goes to show, like if you can summarize it in a snappy sentence, it probably is not like a good rule. A good rule. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's no room for nuance, right? Which yeah. is I think what a lot of these are lacking, and and why chemistry can get a bad rap. And as chemists, as people yeah. who love chemistry, it's like really don't sad. Hate chemicals. Yeah. Just don't hate chemicals. Well, these are really all important. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like I've, I've heard like, you know, Canada's Food Guide is, hasn't always been great, but it has made some um, updates and it's a pretty good resource and has tips for like, you know, how do you actually read a nutrition label? How do you actually yeah. read an ingredients list? So speaking of tomatoes, Elizabeth thought never got to do her. You know, Little Miss Hastings experiment, so I think I'm gonna re recreate it. So what was she doing again? She was going to put the tomato in boiling water and then put in cold water afterwards, and that way the peel is supposed to come off of the tomato really easily. Okay, so this we have a, water boiling. I see water, water boiling. boiling. Yes. We're gonna drop this in. We're gonna drop it in. Let it go for a bit and then yeah. give it an ice bath. Right over here. Sounds good. Yep, just like a Nordic spa. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> you have a little spa day. <laughs> Hopefully it's enough. And then we're supposed to do this for like 60 seconds. Yeah. According to Elizabeth. In the show, she says, the heat causes the molecules to excite, the flesh of the tomato expands on the peel. I tried to like double check and look it up, but yeah. like all you get is like how to plant a tomato, not like <laughs> yeah. why it works. Yes. <clears throat> but I. I think that's right. A few moments later. Maybe we didn't do it long enough. I guess Maybe. we'll see. The peel does not look to be moving. Yeah, it hasn't really expanded out. So in also my search about tomatoes, it's also seen them say cutting like a cross section okay. on the bottom. And I wonder if that is, Maybe. which is not the step that she talked she, about she at all. She didn't mention that didn't at mention all. That. So we were just doing this like. Based on what she said. Yeah. Mm. See, listen, the experiments need to be replicable, right? I think so episode good. one, she yeah. said mistakes are, what, Mist okay? Or yeah. Mis mistakes, mistakes happen. Mistakes happen. Should we, should we do this again? Yeah, let's try this again. We can do it with the cherry tomatoes, and we can do like some scored. Ooh, that's a good idea. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. And hopefully if these are smaller, they'll like, yeah, get, maybe this was just too big. It like didn't heat up enough. Right. It's a variable. Yeah. Yeah. And this is now we're doing... And we're trying to control for all conditions. 
and sometimes it's harder to do. I don't even know if I'm actually scoring it. Do you want me to do it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> but maybe that I saw. Oh, that's probably a. We could do a Rebecca scores and Celia scores. I might have like gone too deep. <laughs> I didn't go deep enough. We got but. two scored, and then okay. we'll do two, two unscored. unscored. And then we'll leave two just in case we gotta do this for the third time. Great. Perfect. <laughs> Science. Okay. Experiment. Water's boiling. Water's boiling. <laughs> like, oh. Like, <laughs> excitement. 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 We lost track. Oh, we lost track of time. How was she gonna get boiling water on stage? Gosh, this was my question. Cause I don't think a kettle, I don't think it like, if you bring yeah. water to a boil yeah, and then you add the stuff, it's like, it'll immediately, it'll, it'll start cooling. Yeah. It'll like just suck in all the heat. Yeah. Whereas like, I think you need the constant addition of heat. heat. Yeah. And like, I don't know what, what yeah. technology they had in the sixties at that point. Like, like she had, she was going to bring a hot, hot plate. plate. Yeah. yeah. That's what that was. But like, then like, she would need the electrical cutter. Oh, yeah. I feel like. I don't know. That seemed like a lot to... It did seem like a lot. See? They didn't explain enough. No, they didn't. They didn't fill in all the blanks. <laughs> fill in all the blanks. Plot hole! <laughs> if you had to do a little bit of tastings... Oh, okay. I feel like you if you're a chemist, yeah. you, you would go for the classic elephant's toothpaste. Oh, right? that is fun. Like the big yes. explosion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that. Or like Coke and Mentos is another... Yes. Do they have Coke and Mentos in the 60s? That's a great question, actually. It has to be oh, done. Oh, yeah, it's because of the it's, like it's, a Yeah, I think yeah it, the I think sugar that they use. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it is. Fun fact, I don't know if you should try this at home or not. But like, if you really want a good reaction, because you need more than one Mentos. So you hot glue gun Mentos together, and then throw it in the Coke bottle. And then run away. But that's smart. Not my idea, but one that I yeah. used a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're starting to wrinkle. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's already split open. Yeah. So I've also heard that the cold water just helps the tomato from not continuing to cook. That is a great question. And that's what I am also wondering. How much does the ice actually matter? Right. Because they're already coming off. But I guess maybe you don't want to be touching a really hot tomato either. Yeah. So these okay. two are the ones that are scored. You can see it's like way yeah. better than like these ones just like happen to split. But yeah. Like, oh, that's bad. Oh, oh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. And they both come off really yeah. easy. Yeah. Uh, do you want to? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Is it cooked? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think the ice water does nothing. I guess our consensus is if it's a larger tomato, you need more time. You need more time than for the 60, 60 seconds. Can you imagine how long that would have taken? Yeah, like, and she's not like a talkative person on stage, right? Like, she's been staring at a tomato for like five minutes. Yeah. She wouldn't have been explaining anything, right? Yeah. Like a, a cooking show is slightly different than like watching a tomato. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> watching a tomato, watching a pot boil, watching a pot boil, and then the tomato boil. Yeah, different a lot. And then like the ice would have melted. Yeah, she needed a. I but I th maybe it's the plot point of like she's kind of boring. Like, that's why <laughs> maybe they put the not like right. those big explosive right. talents. It's like it's yeah. like a subtle. Plus, like, the cooking element as yeah. well, right? Yeah. That's true. Do you think you would like the cooking show yourself? Uh, probably not, no. Would you? Not a, not a cooking show. Yeah, no. I think I could, I'd be down for a show. I don't think cooking is the... Yeah. Like, I like cooking, and I think that I'm a pretty good cook. Yeah. But not a cooking show. I like the science behind cooking. Like, yeah. I feel like if I were to do one, it would more be the, like... The angle she took with her right. show. Yeah, like the main eye reaction. Signs of cocktails. Signs of cocktails. That That's would a, be a good one. He was eating crackers <laughs> in the lab? Test out this lab coat business. Are we helping the cause? Or I don't know. <laughs> well, cheers to lessons from chemistry. Cheers.